Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge T610 server memory upgrades and how to properly load and configure the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the uh, Dell PowerEdge T610. Do us a favor and uh, click the like and smash that subscribe if you find anything useful in today's video. Let's get started. Uh, first things first, this is a uh, tower, but technically you could rack this if you want. Uh, on the bottom, you'll notice when you kind of tip it over, it is pretty heavy. Uh, they have legs inside, so if you want it as a tower, you can just put the legs out and it helps as far as stability. Uh, there's two CPUs inside. Uh, it uses Intel Xeon 5500 or 5600 series CPUs, which is an LGA 1366. Uh, this is the exact same um, as the R610 uh, as far as CPUs and RAM are concerned. Uh, the only difference is really just the form factor. Um, and on that note, as far as the RAM is concerned, there are 12 DIMM slots inside. It takes DDR3 memory. There's a number of different sizes you can use. You can go as low as a 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, or all the way up to 32 gigs. Yes, it does accept 32 gigs. I do understand that Dell spec sheet will tell you it does not, and will say that only it goes up to 16 gigs. Dell just never actually tried putting them in. We have put them in. 32 gigs work. So if you're here because you're wanting to know if 32 gigs will work, yes, they do. You're good to go. Uh, as far as the speeds are concerned, the lowest you can go is 1066. 1333, uh, 1600, all the way up to 1866. Realistically, though, if you put in 1600 or 1866, it's just going to clock back down to 1333. So we recommend to our, a lot of our customers just to grab 1333 for this uh, specific model. So on that note, there's two types of memory that you can use inside. You can use ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can use ECC unbuffered, which is more of your uh, server UDIM. Um, with uh, ECC uh, unbuffered, you, get, you have a, a, a big disadvantage as far as the overall capacity. You can only put in 4 gig modules, uh, so you can put in 12 4 gigs that max out at 48 gigabytes. But with ECC registered, which is what we recommend, you can put in 12 32 gigs and go all the way up to 384 gigabytes. So it's a you know massive increase as far as scalability. And realistically, with this machine, if you're using it at home for you know gaming or you're using this just as your uh, you know office desktop, really you, we recommend you should put in. Um, at minimum 12, 16 gigs, uh, but realistically, you should probably put in 12, 32, 12, 32 gigs just to get the max performance out of it. So anyhow, uh, I want to go ahead and open it up, show you the channels, show you how to actually install the modules. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear because really you never want to be inside a machine without your ESD gear. And I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. Before we actually physically hop in, I did want to stress the point of one thing we did mention. You can use ECC registered and you can use ECC unbuffered. I did want to say and point out specifically, you cannot use load reduced modules also known as LRDIMs. Unfortunately load reduced modules um, are not um, able to be used until the 12th gen line of Dell servers. Uh, the T610 is part of the 11th gen. That's what the, actually the one calls out uh, is that it's part of the 11th gen. The T620 which is the next generation which is the 12th gen uh, will accept load reduced modules and will be very similar uh, overall but uh, that will be the uh, the big benefit for the T620 is that it does accept load reduced. So uh, on that note uh, ECC registered is the way to go for the uh, T610. It's the, the best option. So anyhow, we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and open this up. Uh, you need to make sure that your uh, latch is set to unlock. Uh, there's a little screw in here that if, you, if, it's, if it is locked, just grab a Phillips head very easy. Uh, grab the, pop the top. There we go. It's stuck right now. There we go. Let's pop the top and then just lift it up and put it to the side. Okay, so uh, you will notice a couple things that you're going to need to do uh, before you can just hop in and access the uh, CPUs and the RAM. Uh, before we actually get in here, after after the video is over, I need to actually put in a second CPU. We're just going to go ahead and load up all 12 DIMM slots to show you, but there's actually only one CPU in here right now. So uh, in order to get to the CPUs and RAM, uh, you have this piece right here. You need to pull, there's two uh, blue uh, tabs right here. The one on the furthest on the inside is uh, it moves and pivots in, so you're gonna need to push it in, and then you're gonna lift just straight up, okay? And then it just pops right out. It's pretty easy. Um, and then you're gonna have the air baffle, and this is a huge air baffle. And uh, one of the questions that we hear about it sometimes. Um, there, because there's some fans in the back right here, the fans are pretty heavy. When you start lifting it up, and the fans are connected for that matter, but uh, when you start lifting it up, it feels like you're having to use a lot of force. Um, and it's, it's really just because it's kind of heavy and it's not like a, just a normal just plastic air baffle. So I just want to preface that to make it easier for everybody. So you see this blue piece right here, you're just going to push the tab in. 
I like to grab right here and push this in and then just lift straight up. Uh, it's really easy to do, but I just wanted to kind of tell uh, everybody and be careful there are some cables over here that you might snag so just be careful lifting it up but you'll notice uh, on the bottom here these are the fans that I'm talking about and they do add some extra weight and there's some connectors in here uh, so when we're putting them back in we just need to be careful and uh, make sure that we're putting it back in properly so uh, anyhow now that we are physically in the machine um, you can see a number of different things uh, the back plane here for you know all the different drives you can put in uh, there's the two CPUs currently there's only one heat sink and I do need to install this after the video um, and then there's the 12 dim slots uh, this is really important because in a situation like this for instance where there there is only uh, one CPU you need to make sure that you're using uh, all the uh, the a dim slots because that's what's associated with the CPU so CPU 1 controls the six dim slots over here CPU 2 controls the six dim slots over here um, and this is very important for uh, like I said if you only have one CPU but it's also important for how you install the modules because you need to be aware of the channels uh, and the channels are always important if you're not familiar with memory channels uh, basically uh, the memory channels kind of help balance the load uh, which is important from a performance standpoint um, so uh, let's just say for instance uh, you were only putting in six modules with two CPUs uh, the proper way to configure this is to use the white dim slots the white dim slots are the start of the channel so uh, if you look right here Actually, it's probably tough to see these ones, so I'll go back here to show you. Uh, technically, these are the A, uh, which are associated with CPU-1. These are all the A DIMM slots, and these are all the, uh, the B DIMM slots back here. But if you look back here, uh, this is B1, the white DIMM slot right here. And then it skips the black, because the black is actually the, uh, the second part of the channel. And then B2 is the second white, and then B3 is the third white, okay? So the... Um, the, the first black is actually B4, and then that's B5, and then B6 over here. So uh, the way that you'd want to do it, if, again, if you're only configuring six modules inside, is you'd put them in the six white dim slots, assuming you have two CPUs, of course. Um, now, what I recommend is to honestly just put 12 into all of them and just to max this thing out and get the most out of it. But um, this is important for some people at home who, you know, might not need the most robust application out of this and are, you know, totally fine with, you know, maybe six uh, 16 gigs or you know 12 8 gigs or something like this then you need to just kind of know how to, um, to configure it so uh, but actually if you're using 12 you're just gonna fill them all up so maybe like six uh, six gigs or six uh, uh, 8 gigs so on that note I'm gonna actually go ahead and uh, start configuring this for you we have some 32 gig dims here um, and I want to show you with the 32 gig uh, ECC register generally you're gonna have them uh, have the shield on them there is uh, a notch in the middle uh, this is also known as a key this notch is really important uh, this prevents users from uh, putting in the wrong module. For instance, you couldn't you know, put in a DDR4 module in here, an old DDR2 module in here. Uh, but it's also important because if you look at the DIMM slots themselves, there's a little plastic piece that sticks up in the middle of it. Um, you have to line the module perfectly, otherwise you're going to end up potentially damaging the lead, which could damage the memory, or you could damage the DIMM slot, which would mean you'd have to get a whole new motherboard, and nobody wants to have to do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to properly configure it. I mean, one of the other things I always like to note too, you should really pop open all your tabs in advance. It just makes it a little bit easier while you're installing them so you're not having to fumble around with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here. Uh, this is A1. Um, we kind of showed the back, so it's A1, uh, A2, and then A3, the three white ones. So I'm going to start here. I need to flip it around to line it up properly. And one other thing I, I wanted to note before I put it in, um, Right now, the module's set down. I'm not holding it. You can see the module is, is, you know, is in, but it's really not in. Uh, it's not fully seated. And so an error that we hear um, you know, all too common, unfortunately, is a, is a customer will think they have a bad dim. And really, it's not a bad dim. The dim's just not fully seated. So you want to hear this right here. When you push it down, it's going to make this click. And you want to hear it on both sides. And that's when you really know that the module has actually been fully seated. Um, it's really easy to... Uh, to think that you have seated it because uh, sometimes you have to apply a, a decent amount of pressure to to really get the module in um, of course I'm not saying to push really hard but sometimes you do have to push it a little bit hard to, to get it to fully insert uh, but just hearing that click click um, that's how I always know that I've fully inserted the module I also make sure at the very end when I'm done one of the things I like to do is you can see right now on on the uh, camera that these tabs right here are fully in and these tabs are still sticking out 
if I've put a module in and one of these tabs is still kind of sticking out, then I know I messed up and I you know was just going too fast and I simply didn't fully seat it and I have to just go back and apply a little pressure. So just little things because it always stinks once you've uh, you know put the whole system back together and you go uh, you know you find an error because you didn't seat the module properly and then you have to reopen everything uh, just to, to seat the module so just little things to make your life easier so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this last one and then we're gonna start on the second CPU um, and I'll install the CPU after this video is over so I'm just gonna get the the RAM installed for now uh, I will note uh, the module does flip as far as the, uh, the the key is concerned here, so you need to make sure that you're, you're beware of that, otherwise you could run into some potential issues. So we're going to go ahead and hit that fast forward, and I'll get these last six done right now. All right, and just like that, really in a matter of a couple of minutes, you can get inside, you can install these. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's very easy. And, and that's one thing I tell people, if you're at home right now and you're looking at your system and you're like, ah, you know, I'm not really a technician. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, honestly, it's very easy. Like videos like this make it very simple for anyone at home to be able to, to just really do some of these things and just knock it out. Um, so don't worry if you're uh, if you haven't been doing this a long time, this is a very easy process. And if you have any trouble, you can always message us as well, and our team can help you out. So uh, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this all back together. Uh, first things first, we're going to put this heavy air baffle back in. Do note that the, uh, the cables over here can be a little bit of an issue, so just be careful when you're lining it up uh, to make sure that you don't hit those cables. So, all right. And I do push this down to make sure that you fully get it in, okay? And then you're just going to push it, put this back in, and this just slides right in, and you'll hear it click, and boom, we're in. So just like that, uh, really, like I said, in a matter of minutes, you can knock all this out, and it's a, a really easy process as a whole. Um, so if you're looking for any upgrades, uh, do us a favor, uh, reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com and we'd love to help you out with some of your upgrades and hey if you made it this far uh, do us a favor click the like and smash that subscribe hey thanks for stopping by have a great day